Hi everyone. So my name is Anandita. Uh, I'm going to quickly take you over the new features that were announced as a part of Sitecore 10.1, which is just which was just released, and also give you um, a quick sneak peek into the new launchpad that's come and uh, look at um, Horizon as well. So let's get started. All right. One of the most uh, exciting and the most awaited features that came with Sitecore 10.1 was uh, Sitecore AI. Uh, this was something that was announced as a part of uh, the previous symposium and was delivered with Sitecore 10.1. And uh, this is uh, basically artificial intelligence driven automated personalization. Uh, Sitecore has its own machine learning framework which drives this automated personalization. Uh, Sitecore has announced uh, three basic requirements to leverage the AI for auto personalization. Uh, one is you need to be on Sitecore 9.x uh, plus platform on cloud. Um, uh, in, and then you need to, um, excuse me, um, you need to define your goals and engagement value scores. That is like any other personalization and also create your content variation and enable auto personalization then. So uh, uh, all of this together should ideally uh, let the marketing professionals drive auto personalization based on the user's journey and select the content variation accordingly. Uh, so I know at this point it kind of sounds a little Harry Potterish, and I'm really looking forward to uh, see it in action. Um, not yet had a chance to actually play around with that because I didn't have a, a cloud instance installed, but yeah. That looks really interesting, and that's one of the things I'm really looking forward to try out. Um, the next point is the upgrade methodology. So there have been significant updates to upgrade methodology. Um, there is a unified uh, approach for upgrade from Sitecore 8.1 onwards to Sitecore 10.1. Uh, and there's, I believe, a common uh, update guide also that has been provided, and it is not uh, you know, version specific. Uh, one of the biggest changes made on a very basic architecture level has been the hybrid data provider. So uh, once you install Sitecore 10.1, if you go and um, you know query your items table in the master database, you're going to see like two rows as opposed to um, you know the, the all the many that we used to see in previous versions. So um, all the uh, rows corresponding to the items that are a part of your uh, Sitecore vanilla instance are no longer there in master uh, when you create the vanilla instance. So um, why is that? Uh, we, know, we now have a hybrid data provider for our databases. So when you look at the content editor, you're actually seeing a merge of two things. That is the rows that are actually there in the database and the serialized items which are read from the data files on disk. So you can see on the screen on the right side, the screenshot that is there. So as a part of the vanilla install, these files actually are also added. And um, that's what I'm talking about when it's actually reading from the disk. So all the standard items um, of the, of, uh, which are like the uh, Sitecore's uh, um, internal uh, or the system items and everything that it needs of a functioning on initial load they are all now wrapped up using a uh, google protobuf library and read from disk so uh, this is basically a serialization library that is provided by google so if you were to do any updates to the existing items like say the content node um, or you know ex system templates uh, you add new fields and stuff like that so when you make any updates and uh, go into the master database again and check your item table, you'll see that a row has gotten created there. So any updates made to the system items or existing items and any new items that you create, all of that is going to go into the master database. And while reading an item, the precedence is always given to the master database as opposed to the, the um, file system um, files itself. So that is one of the uh, you know biggest uh, architecture related updates that I have seen in this um, release, and um, 
So what this, effect, uh, what this effectively means is that in future upgrades, uh, all you'll need to do to upgrade the core system is to just replace these files and there won't be any more uh, packages to update the databases for upgrades. So that's pretty huge. And uh, eventually it's going to have a drastic difference, uh, I think even from this version on itself, to the publishing time because uh, you don't really have all the, you know, um, uh, the items for the of the vanilla instance, which is required for cycle functioning. So all of that is removed from the master database. So that's definitely going to have a, a very good effect on the publishing time. So that's something that looked really exciting in this uh, release. Um, the next thing moving on is uh, updates that are made to Horizon. So um, I'm not sure if. Um, one of you have actually um, you know, looked at Horizon or had a chance to play around with Horizon. It's been around for a while now. I think they um, introduced it some point around uh, Psychor 9 something. Uh, so yeah, it was initially released as uh, yeah, you know, in beta mode and it's it's been um, hanging out for a while, but and it has been improving and things have been getting added to Horizon um, in almost every release that Psychor has been giving since then. So just to give sort of a background, uh, Horizon is a, a new editing tool or a, um, a new application that Sitecore has built, which will allow us to edit our content and pages in a more seamless manner. And uh, um, so that's the basic idea as such. Um, but there's a lot of things, again, like I mentioned, initially there wasn't um, too many things that you could do with Horizon, but that has been improving with every release and uh, performance wise, uh, if anyone who's looked at it knows that it's way faster than experience editor, hopefully it will continue to be so even while it um, gets loaded up with uh, more and more features. Excuse me. All right. So um, Horizon is still not um, available out of the box as such with the vanilla install. It is something that you need to install separately. So um, and it, it doesn't have a GUI uh, setup as such. Uh, so you can download it from Sitecore's uh, downloads page, and then um, you have a PowerShell script. So it's it's a little. Uh, developer intensive, I would say, uh, at this point to install it. It's not just installing a package or you know just next, next, next through GUI uh, interface. So um, yeah, you uh, have to update your PowerShell script with the um, parameters as per where you want to create the Horizons website and which Sitecore instance you want to connect it to. So what Horizon does is basically, yeah, so it creates a new website and it uh, connects it to whatever instance you configure it to uh, connect to and make editable. So show you that in Sitecore. So I have an 10.1 uh, instance up. You can see we have the new UI for the launch pad. Uh, looks pretty sleek. And I have installed, so once you install Horizon, it's going to show up as an um, icon in the uh, launch pad here. Probably log me out by now. Yeah. Okay. So um, this is the basic um, interface of Horizon. I haven't really added too many things here, but um, um, for the vanilla instance itself, you can see things are up. You can edit your pages and content, and uh, you can you know publish stuff. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of different things you can do around here, and it has a very sleek interface. It's not very heavy, so that's something that I found uh, really interesting. Uh, some of the caveats or some of the points that I actually realized about Horizon is that um, it allows editing only the latest publishable version right now. So uh, if you'd like to make edits to an older version or a version which is, uh, um, you know, which has published restrictions on it, that uh, has to be done only in the content editor. And Horizon also supports concurrent editing. It doesn't really lock the item during editing. And it has um, autosave enabled as well. Uh, you can browse through different languages based on what you have uh, selected in your system node. So if you were to 
select a language in which there is no version available for the given item. So it's going to show up and, uh, you know, the, the page is going to basically be blank in that case. Uh, you won't get the content. And if you start typing on the content, um, which basically means you're entering data for this new version, uh, for this, uh, you know, language which doesn't have a version, it automatically creates uh, a version for the language. So, um, as opposed to, you know, having to create the language yourself as in, uh, as what we do today. Uh, there's also a built-in simulator, the device simulator. That's something I thought was pretty cool without having to do anything and it's out of the box there. And so this is something that we test nowadays anyway. So it's, it's pretty good to have this um, right within the, um, you know, the, the application here test different things so that is one of the things and uh, that also look pretty interesting i think they have this nazi new ui as well including um you know timelines seeing your content so yeah um these were the things i kind of looked at in horizon so going back um i haven't actually had a chance to uh, explore it before that's why i was quite excited about these things and Pretty sure anyone who's already played around with the horizon is familiar with all of this. <clears throat> so going back into what came new uh, in 10.1 with horizon, uh, one is the search implementation. So if you look at uh, here, so this is where the search is. And uh, this, this has been added new in 10.1, where you can search for your page content or media or all items, depending on what you'd like to see. Uh, one thing to note here is when you search for media, it not only gives you the media results, it also includes the pages and content where that media item is used. So it helps you to navigate around and edit your pages and content accordingly. Uh, there is currently no wildcard search, but if you try to search, if you want an exact match, you can always use uh, double quotes um, to get the exact match. That's one of the things. Now moving on to the remaining changes. Um, so yeah, uh, editing support for link fields and number fields has been added in this release uh, and also the provision to reset fields. Now uh, you can create and edit data sources and content items from right within Horizon and also publish with sub items. So I think you can see that here, the publish with sub items option. <coughs> So all of these were added in Sitecore 10.1. So there are more and more things that you can do uh, or can achieve without having to leave Horizon ever. I believe that's the target, I guess, right? That uh, you be able to dynamically create a lot of pages in, uh, in you know, uh, very quickly from within Horizon without having to switch through different editors as such. So it's uh, almost getting to the mainstream use stage. So it's really exciting to see Horizon um evolve since when it has been released additionally um, compatibility for sxa is also being added and you can easily enable this for your content uh, for your content editors you need to uh there is some a bit of development work involved here so hopefully that will get simplified in later versions as well so that's regarding horizon So uh, moving on to uh, the next feature, which is regarding digital marketing. Uh, to give you some background, so you can create profile cards to save combinations of profile keys and values that you apply to your content, uh, which basically means you can categorize your content based on rules and interactions upon which you can base marketing decisions. So uh, until now, you had to manually assign these to your pages one by one. And uh, the latest enhancements that we have allow you to assign the profile cards to multiple items using a rules engine, which is what you're seeing um, here on the right. So that was one of the updates that came with 10.1. Uh, the next set of updates are with regard to Sitecore forms. So um, as you're probably aware, so, um, all the fields that are added, fields and uh, the components that are added you know, on Sitecore forms 
can have a CSS classes associated with them. And in the past, the content author or your marketing professionals who are actually responsible for the forms. So they were to enter these classes uh, manually onto a text box field. So it required a certain level of know how. Um, you know, from the part of these, uh, the executives who are not really developers. So, and it was also prone to errors that like any other manual entry is. So, um, it's a pretty nice uh, update that they've given where uh, we as developers can create a list of classes with uh, content author friendly names on a field by field basis. So, which will enable um, autocomplete like you see here on the screenshot on the right. So I've taken this from the site code documentation itself. So just a heads up. So this is one of the features that came with forms. Now email submit action is finally here. This is something that anybody who's familiar with the web form for marketers world is uh, going to take a long sigh about. So uh, uh, we had this, we had a pretty robust one with web form for marketers and for whatever reason, uh, it has taken this long for it to come in site code forms. Uh, we did have alternatives. Uh, initially, uh, the way of doing this was using EXM. Sorry about any background noise, but it's a Saturday. Anyways, so um, uh, yeah, uh, previously uh, the way to do this was using uh, Sitecore EXM, but it did seem like a little bit of a roundabout way to try and achieve something as simple as just send out an email. If that's what you wanted to do, you just wanted to send out a plain, simple email along with the form uh, data submitted. So it was a lot of, uh, it was a little roundabout way to do that. And uh, we did have a lot of, uh, I guess, add-ons available in the market as well that achieved this, but um, having it out of the box definitely um, makes things a lot simpler for um, us as well and it's preferred. So, um, uh, this is an, uh, like I mentioned, out of the box solution to send emails without needing to utilize EXM. Um, you can easily edit the messages using the rich text editor and also incorporate the information that uh, needs to be submitted from the form itself. Uh, there's uh, um, an address book uh, the, uh, that has been added, so that's uh, this is new. And this allows us to define and easily select the sender's email address so you can manage a list and just from that drop down, you can select the sender email as well in the emails that you compose. Apart from this, uh, we also have the ability to create custom validators based on uh, existing regular expressions. So, uh, and, and these are the validators that you can make available um, on the form fields. Uh, and there was just one caveat, I believe, that was mentioned regarding uh, the use of, um, or rather, or rather, avoiding the use of uh, multiple validators of the same type on a single field. So things like uh, telephone and email, which are both um, regular expression type of validators, should not be ideally used on a single field itself, as uh, you know, it would lead to conflicts. Um, so that's about it with regard to forms. On to the next. All right, the next set of updates is with regard to XConnect. Uh, so the contact behavior profile calculated facet, it stores the matched profiles and patterns for a contact, and it is represented by this class, the contact behavior profile uh, class. And um, there are now two ways to calculate this facet. So with the new approach, the calculated facet contains the aggregated profile scores from all the interactions as opposed to uh, the previous version where it just used the latest interaction. So that has been an update that has come in this version. Um, with regard to role scaling and configuration, the XDB reporting role has been combined with the content management role. This has been done in an attempt to um, you know, scale down the hosting costs. Uh, there has been a new uh, feature added called uh, XConnect Scalable Reads. So uh, this is related to the um, architecture that you're seeing on the right here. <clears throat> so you have XConnect writing data onto a primary DB cluster, uh, which is on top here. And uh, this new feature configures or allows you to configure the replication for the collection database cluster. 
and it allows a load balance of complex read workloads without affecting the primary OLTP workload, which is uh, you know the primary read write connection that you're seeing here. So XConnect uh, um, read scaleout is available both for the SQL on-prem and SQL Azure collection database um, right, architectures, and uh, it's, it's uh, not supported by the MongoDB provider. So this is something that has been scaled back and we'll look at that in the end as well. So one of the users that uh, was already mentioned regarding this was uh, one of the new, again, features, which is the XConnect for contacts. So if so you can you know kind of run that off of the, um, the primary cluster while you're still um, have the secondary cluster on read-only mode. So this is something that you can split out basically. So that was the update. Now, with regard to contact IP addresses, the CD role stores all the incoming contact IP addresses in the XDB reference data database. So the IP addresses are encrypted using the MD5 algorithm and a random security string or a salt uh, can be specified in the Sitecore Analytics tracking config file. So this is, uh, I guess, good to know, um, mainly uh, if you're trying to do an upgrade and uh, you need to have this set up right because this was a change made in the current version. The XConnect data purge for contacts is a new tool that was added and it lets you clean up unused analytical data uh, to release the space and to remove the irrelevant data. Now, the tool lets you purge contra uh, contacts that did not interact with the site for a specified amount of time or, you know, purge anonymous contacts, or you can use custom conditions as well to, um, uh, to basically trigger the tool. And uh, you can initiate the data purge task using a web API request, or uh, there's an available CLI XConnect plugin as well. You can use that too. So that's... Uh, a pretty uh, that's another thing that I th I do know a lot of people have tried to customize so it's nice to have that out of the box as well there were a couple of new features added to content search not really to the core functioning of the, the search functioning as such but uh, it's still pretty um, good and pretty important I guess so uh, one of them is uh, you can configure solar now to retry um, an operation if it fails on the first attempt. So this is available out of the box and you have configurations available in the config file for this. Uh, this would be useful if there are network problems or you have solar availability issues as a lot of us do, let's admit it. So you can also check from your code if the solar search service itself is available. This is something that we couldn't do out of the box before. And um, uh, if it is not, we can take some, um, uh, you know, some appropriate action, which means that we can show a more user-friendly error than showing a 500 error page. Um, so that, those are the two updates, I believe, with regard to content search. Um, that's uh, configuring the solar to retry and also to uh, programmatically check if the solar service is up or not and handle that, handle that accordingly. Right. So the next point uh, is with regard to uh, CLI or the command line interface. So Sitecore now has a command line interface where you can do things like uh, install and remove packages uh, or uh, plugins. So it's pretty similar to NPM if you think of it that way. Um, that's pretty cool. And uh, the CLI can be extended using a plugin model and it can be integrated with NuGet as well. So in the future, you could you know, create a model, a module with um, you know, code, I uh, code updates and also item updates and push the entire thing into NuGet. And uh, you, know, you could also uh, install such modules with both code and item updates from NuGet directly. So that's an advanced, um, I mean, that's something that is a, a, a new feature, especially as opposed to the traditional way of doing things, that is uh, installing Sitecore packages for the item updates. So that is one of the new updates that have come with regard to CLI. I think they've uh, also provided us with some um, 
default plugins. A couple of them was what I saw. One, one was uh, the one that we just uh, saw in, I think, the previous slide um, regarding the XConnect Data Purge tool. And there are a couple more as well, which I've been provided. But um, as developers, we can uh, create more custom plugins as well and uh, use them from CLI. So this opens a, yeah, a whole new uh, platform for us to uh, kind of um, you know, host our, uh, our modules and test them and make sure they're all reusable from this uh, format as well. With regard to uh, GOIP, so it is now possible to use GOIP rules for personalization. And uh, there are three levels of GOIP data retrieval now, as opposed to the two that they were before. So previously, uh, uh, in addition to hitting the service directly, um, the data would get cached in your uh, database. So now there's a third level that has been added, uh, which is the memory cache itself. Obviously, this is the fastest one, and it is configurable um, in the way that you can uh, you know, set up how long you'd like uh, content to be persisted in the memory cache and what conditions need to be met to uh, purge that cache. And um, so the second level is, again, the database, which is an existing one. Uh, it uses, I believe, the same table, the visit GOIP data table that it was using before. Uh, things like the lifetime of the data, that is uh, the GOIP data corresponding to the IP address uh, request, the lifetime, the database in use, and the cleanup agent, uh, all of this is configurable. Uh, I believe it was before as well. And uh, the third level is, of course, uh, it's finally is the geolocation service itself. So these are the three levels of GIP retrieval. It should help with faster retrieval, especially given the memory cache option that has been added now. There has also been an update to the activation setting for activating your GIP service. Um, it's been documented, uh, so I'm not going to go over that. It's basically just a config update. So that's something you'd want to keep in mind if you're trying to activate uh, the GOIP service in the latest version. So the next point is reg with regard to caching, and this is something developers can be really excited about. Um, so the caching mechanism, as we know, it is an important feature that ensures a smooth and efficient running platform. Um, Sitecore has finally managed to resolve the caching uh, issue which uh, basically causes the entire HTML cache to be cleared whenever a publish is done. So that is something um, that has been working in this way for a while now. So now it is possible to clear the HTML cache for only the published item and any item related to it. So if you look at the screenshot on the right here, uh, this is a field that has been added to the renderings. So it allows us to um, you know, select what uh, what kind of fields, uh, what kind of items are related to a given rendering uh, in addition to the data source, of course, so it mentions that. So uh, based on these settings, it will, uh, you know, identify the related items that need to be purged from the cache when the publish happens as opposed to wiping out everything. So this is going to be especially beneficial for multi-site instances. Um, so you know, publish on one side is not going to basically clear out the HTML cache of the other side as well. So this is something that's going to be helping us largely with performance as well. So that was something to keep in mind with regard to partial HTML ca uh, cache clearing. Um, the last point here uh, is regarding to uh, HADR, which is a high availability disaster recovery uh, concept. So I'm not sure how many of us have uh, worked with uh, Sitecore Managed Cloud. Actually, I'd like to hear, uh, so of everyone, ha have a lot of people here used Managed Cloud? Maybe anyone? Sorry, yeah, uh, so, so it's a pretty expensive offering, I guess, and us being developers, it's more of, uh, yeah, we usually have teams that deal, DevOps teams and stuff that deal with things that uh, uh, Sitecore MC is uh, offering. So, um, uh, 
just to give you a sort of a, an overview, it's a hosting option that is available from Sitecore itself. So Sitecore Managed Cloud, uh, the, uh, the Sitecore team itself will be managing your um, um, your your hosting instance. And they have uh, a lot of offerings and different plans and different uh, for your the uh, you know kind of website you have the kind of traffic you have so um, there are different levels of support that you can purchase along with this uh, offering so disaster recovery is of course one of the um, yeah, one of the things one of the um, offerings or it's a part of this uh, offering and there are uh, different modes of disaster recovery as well available so in this instance, um, in specific, there have been changes to the setup script, failover, and failback processes. Um, so I wouldn't go into details because, uh, frankly speaking, I haven't actually uh, had a chance to look into uh, any of these. I think uh, mostly if you're a core uh, DevOps uh, member, that's probably when you'll actually come across um, all of these specific things. But it's good to know anyhow. So uh, that was with regard to um, updates on experience platform and experience manager. I'm going to quickly take a look at the EXM updates that came with uh, Sitecore 10.1. So the first point is um, there have been uh, a lot of new email templates that have been added, as you can see on the screenshot on the right here. Uh, this was something that uh, was quite exciting for me because I've used other, uh, you know, email campaign tools and uh, they've had these kind of uh, visually laid out uh, templates for a while and it was really easy to use. So it's nice to see Sitecore also providing, giving us that provision with a lot of different um, uh, templates available now to choose from uh, with these different varied layouts. So that's something that has been added uh, as a part of this uh, release. Um, with regard to retriers, so uh, this basically means that if an email send fails, then EXM provides various retry options. Um, in addition to uh, configuring fixed interval, which was uh, uh, already available, there is now an option to configure exponential retry mechanism. And this is now the default mechanism and it uses um, uh, an algorithm which uh, in um, you know according to which the repeated retries are spaced out at random intervals what this tries to achieve is uh, uh, to avoid your uh, network congestion as such by using which sometimes happens with fixed interval retries um, with regard to multi-language management, so a uh, marketer can now create email messages in languages which are not set as your own language as well, provided that the user has language right access on the language in which they need to create the email message. So this is a new um, right access option that has been created, uh, language right uh, access. So uh, if a content author or say a marketing professional, they need to be able to author emails in uh, other languages as well. So you need to go into the system folder and go to that particular language. And in the security, you need to assign this language right access to that user who needs to do the authoring. So that was uh, the update that was provided in this version. Um, I believe those are all the updates that I had to go over. There were a few on Sitecore Commerce as well. I'm not going to go over because, um, yeah, it's been a while since I've actually looked at commerce myself. So um, that's something that I would encourage you to go ahead and um, go over in the um, release notes or even uh, the documentation that Sitecore has provided. They're pretty thorough that way. Um, regarding deprecated features, so one biggie is that uh, MongoDB providers for session and collection are removed now in Sitecore 10.1. Uh, so to upgrade, depending on the version you're on, you will either need to use a migration tool to migrate your data to SQL, or if you're on a higher version, then you can use XConnect uh, to copy your data to SQL. Um, Azure search is being phased out. I think uh, most of us are aware of that, so it's a good idea to um, start, especially a new 
uh, you know, new instances, it's, it's, it's a good, good idea to start with solar itself, because uh, you will need to uh, migrate out very soon. It's not going to be supported. And um, Active Directory is not supported since Sidecore 9.1, so it remains to be not supported. Um, yeah, I believe that's all I had for now. And if you have any questions, you can raise them now. If I have answers, I'll get them to you. If I don't, I will try to look them up and get them back to you as well. Right. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone.